Hey everyone and welcome to episode number 24 of season 2 of the World of Presentations podcast brought to you by us at 356 Labs. My name is Boris, I'm the founder of the company and today together with me I have another founder of a very interesting company quite heavily involved I would say in the presentation industry. Uh, the company is called Empower and at the same time Stefan, right? Stefan because it's a German name. Right? Should yeah, we call it Stefan? Stefan, Stefan yeah. okay. Uh, but I think when it's German, it should shouldn't it be Stefan, or not? Stefan. Yeah, I won't. I won't okay. stress the exact pronunciation, but Stefan is perfect. <laughs> okay. Well, there you have it. <laughs> so he joins the podcast to let us know more about his participation at the upcoming Present to Succeed conference. He's one of our speakers. His company is actually one of our sponsors at this event. Plus, he has a ton of experience in the presentation industry, in the presentation field. And I believe you guys will take a lot of this. Stefan, welcome to the podcast. It's my favorite number, as I told you already, 24. I relate this to Kobe Bryant, nothing related to you, but it's an important number for me. So welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So let us know, let us know a little bit about yourself, just a little bit background. What were you doing before Empower? How did that all happen afterwards? It's a very interesting story. So let's mm -hmm. start there. Sure. So, um, well, I think it all started after um, after my studies. I started, um, let's say, a typical career um, at a consultancy. I started being a strategy consultant at Accenture. And I was, as you can guess, working heavily with PowerPoint presentations mm. from uh, morning to, to evenings. And I think... This is where, yeah, I really got to know the, the presentation industry. And um, I was, I mean, I have a computer science background and a business background, so kind of the, the mixture. And I, th I think I soon realized that there's um, a huge potential in optimizing the office tools. Yeah. Not only presentations, I have to say, also like Excel tools and like everything related to, yeah, to office, office mm -hmm. apps. Um, and then we started, we started um, like, Three years. I mean, I, we started the company in power besides being a um, consultant. So one, my co-founder and myself, and we, we started like um, working in the evenings and on the weekends on the idea. And then it's, yeah, there was a lot of um, positive feedback and we got more and more clients while not being actually a real company, right? <laughs> We're okay. just doing it um, privately. Um, and then we, um, yeah, after three and a half years, we, we quit our jobs at Accenture and started with Empower. Um, and it, yeah, from then we, so we didn't take any venture capital or anything. We just yep. grew organically, like very old school, you could say. Um, yep. And so we made, yeah, we made profits from day one and, and invested all the money since day one into the product development. And yep. that's, I think today with the, the ninth generation of Empower. So it uh, has been a pretty interesting and exciting journey for us so far. You, you are very close to catching up on, on the Apple guys with their 10th or 11th version of their Mac OS and stuff like that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> You're very close there. So let us know what happened in Accenture. You saw, this, you first of all, you are doing a lot of presentations in Accenture, plus you saw a lot of presentations in Accenture. What are your impressions for the corporate world? Like what's going on in there? Um, so I think I am. I was working with, with um, of course, with partners at Accenture, and mm. and one of these partners that was also a mentor to me. She told me once, you know, I can literally tell you for every presentation I see, I can tell you who has created it. And I was asking her, is that a good thing? And she said, no, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> we are Accenture. We should be always presenting, you know, in the same style, in the same quality, always professionally, and. And it's just not happening. Everybody yeah. has its own taste and his own style. And so I think I realized pretty soon, and I, I would always say that the, the consulting industry is pretty much, I mean, it's very sophisticated PowerPointing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's not always the most beautiful or emotional, but it's very aligned. It's very neat in terms of same font size and everything. So it's really like they know their business and they are very strict on having good presentations. But um, so I, I already thought that even if a company like Accenture is selling 
consultant work and of course selling presentations at the end of the day, right? Yeah. With all the recommendations. Um, it's interesting that there is no consistency all over the place. And so that was my impression from looking inside Accenture and of course then seeing client presentations. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say, well, I don't know. It's just, it's just all over the place. And it, I think people are just lost in, in trying. And, and I, think, I think what I would like to, to say is that I think the reason people spend so much time on presentations because it's, I would say, the most emotional thing in business. The most emotional thing in mm. business is creating a presentation because you're selling yourself, you're selling your work, you're selling, you're selling the, it to your boss, to your colleagues, to your partner, to your client, to yeah. whoever. So that's the reason why people like, okay, this is an important thing, right? So yeah. let's, let me put all my love and energy into that presentation. And the problem is, and that's something, I mean, not for you, Boris, but for me, it's the same. I'm not a designer. I can tell you what looks great but I can't create something that looks great. So I'm like, yep. I'm starting with the empty slide and it's a bullet list and it's freaking boring, yep. right? And I'm like, what would be a yep. cool visual look like? And then, okay, I think images, but images alone is not, I mean, that gets boring very soon as well. So you are, I think most of yep. us, that's my, that's my feeling, sit there and like, how can I make this look amazing and sparkling? And most of us fail horribly. <laughs> yeah. At least what I saw, um, no offense yeah. to anybody here, but um, I think that's like somehow the challenges. So people spend a lot of time with it because it's so important. And that's, I think for sure, it's so important. And on the other hand, we are just not all designers like you are and your team. So we're like- I'm also not a designer. Okay, but I guess we have some cool, <laughs> cool colleagues. Yeah, but I can appreciate the good design, you know? I appreciate it, which is very important. And I know- yeah. Sometimes it gets them even frustrated because I see details that even they sometimes don't see, which is very strange. <laughs> like I'm such yeah. a fanatic in terms of the details. <laughs> Anyhow, you say that it's very important that people spend a lot of time mm. or at least try, you know, like at yeah. least try because they understand its importance. Have you seen, because when you say this, I really, when you said it, I was like, oh my God, hopefully more people will hear that there are other people out there that consider each and every one of their presentations as super important because they sell themselves, right? It's just plain and simple. You are going with your name there and the impressions that you more or less provoke and create for yourself are reflecting immediately how people perceive you, right? Mm -hmm. Do you really... My question is probably a common because I'm not sure that I see that many as you, that many people that consider presentations that important, you know? Like, I really want people to kind of think of presentations as that important. And I'm like, is that the majority of the people that you have seen at Accenture or not? Like, mm, well. what do you think? So, well, there's the industry bias, obviously, right? So okay. it's, a, it's, tough yeah. it's a fair question. I think, I think there are different types of people and there is, okay. this, let's, 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 let's talk in stereotypes. Okay. Let's think about a typical engineer. Mm -hmm. I would say the typical engineer would say, come on, it's just a presentation. It's all, yes. all, all about the content. Okay. Yeah. We all heard that. We all saw that. And, um, but I think people uh, in particular in business, not, and, and I'm not talking to them um, about consultants only that are yeah. selling their work to clients. I'm also talking about the marketeer sitting in a meeting, presenting his project mm. about his job that he did the last weeks. And everybody knows it makes a big difference whether how, what is the impression of my work with lousy slides, very boring bullet list, or with really cool looking professional stuff. I think that makes it. So, I mean, I, I think I can, maybe I have a proof for you based on our study, which okay. maybe could be interesting. Okay. Um, I think people, more or less, if you ask them, they wouldn't over um, overstress the importance because that's natural, right? Yeah, it's about the okay. content, you know, Boris, we're not, you know, it's not about the, the you know, it's, it's not the packaging only. That's what we all say, but we, I think we all know, and we don't want to talk about it too much, but we all know that it's also about packaging. It's mm. also about that it really should look good. Do yeah. I dress myself nicely before an important meeting? Yes, I do. 
right? Yes. And I tried to fix my hair. I tried to, you know, I tried to look nice and put a nice suit on, right? Because I want to make a good impression of myself. So why yeah. should my presentation not look good? There is no yeah. point. I think it's, it's important that here's my proof, maybe a little proof to it. So we did our mm. study. So we, um, we're just about to launch it. So it's like a, a sneak peek. And before the official release of these oh, studies, yes. Here we, um, go. we asked um, and <laughs> Globally, 2,000 people with Nielsen Research, like the largest research firm in the world, um, across the across the globe, only business people, only corporate people, not private people. Mm. And how much time do you spend working on presentations on That's average a week? So a week. Okay. here's the number: it's seven hours. Seven, um, seven hours in a seven? day. Okay. Week. That's nearly a day of your work week. And nearly a day where people spend and um, just to be complete here and precise with numbers only not only but 54 percent of people in let's say um, knowledge worker jobs sitting at a desk work with powerpoint mm. so half of the people maybe some listening to the podcast i don't know and um, yes there are people like half of the company doesn't work with powerpoint fully agreed but the other half spends on average seven hours and that's a yeah. huge number and i think and then we asked um, and then, because now here comes the proof. The proof is we asked how much time do you spend formatting, not the content where we all say that's most important. And mm. they nearly up to 40%. So nearly half of the time they work on a presentation, they spend on the formatting. The I would argue yeah. you really think your presentation is important if you spend so much time on formatting. Otherwise, you would probably just say, hey, a bullet list is just fine enough. Let's put my content on and that's my yep. presentation. So I think... Whether people say it or not, the behavior I see also from that data shows me that people put a lot of work and love and try to put a lot of love into their presentations. Did I convince 40 you? Forty percent formatting—that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Like having in mind that we always say that story design delivery, all the three components have to play in sync, obviously. But forty percent on the design, having in mind that you have to come up with the story itself and you have to spend the time to rehearse it. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is quite a lot. I mean, that's quite a lot. Yeah. So is that or is that a confirmation or is that the main reason why you started Empower? Like, was that the main reason why it happened? Mm -hmm. the, the short answer Or you did it for yourself first, kind of. Um, so, no, so, so the, the full founding story goes... Um, slightly different we started because we saw the huge potential in optimizing office so it was not only the presentations mm. it was um you can with macros you can do so cool stuff in excel you can build yeah, exactly. fancy tools super nice looking dashboards that automate themselves um, automatically you don't need to invest sometimes half a million in a, a dashboard project you can do that with a few thousand bucks in in excel and it looks as stunning as it does in any other tool so we thought about mm. just automating wherever office is in play and that's how we started and then when we were and um, when we started full time in 2009 we got more and more inquiries okay. hey could you create us a powerpoint toolbar and of course when, when you do custom development you have to ask a lot of questions so what exactly do you need why and so we did like 10 or 20 toolbar projects you know and at some point mm. we were like thinking come on why do we do it all the time from scratch again let's start let we i think empower was first a let's try out how it feels to create a product right so let's like let's mm. just try it out and so we started with empower as a just um yeah just like a test we do it and then of course mm. i mean people um used it liked it and so it just got bigger and bigger and then of course we started investing much more heavily into the product so it really turned out that we were just the guys doing office automation and the market yeah. told us guys we need powerpoint tooling a lot and i think what is interesting mm -hmm. to say about it we thought there might be excel dashboards there might be word proposal generators we had all these fancy ideas but the the, the biggest common nom denominator was literally powerpoint toolbars powerpoint efficiency so we realized no matter whether you talk to a consultant or to a corporate communications guy or to a salesperson in a, in a medium-sized company all were facing the same problems i need to create stunning presentations i don't find the slides i need 
I don't have the time to stick to any corporate design guidelines, which I don't even know, by the way. Only corporate knows them, yeah. right? So there are people that don't know. Perfect right? presentation delivered now. And how can we do that quickly? And so it turned out mm. that we realized, okay, this is, um, that seems to be big. So I cannot say I'm the in, in, uh, inventor of the whole thing. I can just say we listened a lot and, and we came up with a product that, that clients were requesting. That that was that was what I was about to ask before because you named some problems that you obviously saw and you are going to tell us a little bit about what can pers a person expect from Empower. But uh, how do you how did you get the ideas in regards to what should be in there mm -hmm. and what should be next? Like, what is the process of you getting the ideas? Is it just you guys are seeing some things or do you have like a very active feedback channel through your customers or through the website? How do you decide on, on what's being added there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, a very good question because probably that's one of the biggest um, challenges that um, we face um, with so many users right now. So if more than 1.5 million active users, that's a number that already gives you an idea of how many mm. ideas come back to us. Um, mm. so of course, we reinforce, I mean, we're working with corporate clients, not only, but the majority of those users are corporate yep. users. And what we, of course, we ask for feedback a lot. Um, and yep. so what we try to do is to, um, I mean, we try to understand um, where is the, what, what is, where's the biggest need, I think. So if you have a fancy idea, let's, let's make an example, real life example. You say, hey, I need some support for creating cool animations on a slide because yeah. with, the, with the animation panel, it's pretty cumbersome sometimes. Um, um, and then we're like, okay, interesting. So we ask a lot of questions, we write it down, but we don't prioritize this yet. We, we are very open with it. We tell you, well, we'll have it noted down. We'll see whether other people face similar challenges. Mm. And, if nobody else ever faces this problem, to be honest with you, we'll probably never implement it. But um, if we hear that similar along the lines, same problem mm, directly yeah. two, three times, then we start to suddenly push it up in our back, uh, backlog, like the product pipeline yeah. and say, okay, this seems to hit a need. Um, and then we, we literally have a, we have a list of, I would say easily 300 features that are on the roadmap easily. Um, and we have very clearly documented how many clients, which clients, um, what exactly is the pain. And then we are come like, we release a new version every quarter. So we revisit all these stories. I mean, I know them by heart, to be honest, most of them. And we re revisit and think, okay, what's coming next? So it's a very, um, it's, a mi it's a mixture of a quantitative and qualitative process. Um, yep. But I think that's how we, how we try to, to create and develop a product and that's the feedback we got the best feedback we can get is like and when we do a demo or people use it it's better than a demo everybody yeah. can do a good demo but nobody can fake a good user experience if you have a good user experience and they say wow this is really a product that seems to be made by people who have the same problems as i have that's the biggest compliment i can get that is the biggest compliment yeah. indeed and that's what we try to maintain also with the growth to, to just get, because now, of course, we have fancy ideas, you know, there's like in, in IT, everybody does stuff with machine learning. You have to do machine learning, otherwise you're like old school. But I mean, we are not against that technology, but you have to really have a good case for it. We're not building mm, stuff with machine yeah. learning just that we can put it AI on our website. We need a, we need a decent case. And um, so that's what we try to do listening to clients and their their actual day-to-day -day problems rather than yeah of course stuff that nobody of course don't fall in the trap of modern business words and buzzwords and stuff like that like everyone is talking about ai ml iot mm -hmm. and stuff like that but not that many people really put any meaning behind it right it's yeah. just yeah anyhow um, obviously people who are listening to this one, for sure, they're using Word and Excel, for sure. We can obviously spend separate episodes on each <laughs> and what can, what can Empower do in each and every one of those now tools, but most people are going to listen to this one because for one reason or the other, they care about presentations. So mm -hmm. Empower has this part where you can say, Hey, this PowerPoint thing can be enhanced by Empower Slides. You talked a lot about how you get the feedback, but 
what are the most like give us like an overview of what problems can empower slides resolve for those people that are going to try it out like what should the person expect to stop worry about forever if they have the empower slide software yeah so um, biggest pain points <laughs> where should you start how, i'm sorry how many <laughs> In the, where should you start? In the, people are not going to see the video, but when I asked that question, you were like, Jesus, let's see, where should I start here? <laughs> okay, so where should, where, start from somewhere, like which are the biggest pain points that it's solving? Okay, so um, it's, I'm trying to keep it short. It's, that's the biggest one. That's the biggest challenge for me to keep this one short. So I think it starts solving the problem of very simple stuff like template distribution that when I start a new presentation okay. that I always have access to the latest, latest master templates. It's so obvious, mm -hmm. but it's something we see in 80% of the clients where we go in, we like, oh, people using any random old version of a temp template. Uh, they don't know that there is yeah. a new late version of the template that marketing created. And yeah. um, so that's where we start. So when you launch PowerPoint, you can be 100% sure the latest template is up and running. And if you have multiple, you get to choose or you can just choose yeah. the template you need. So that was easy, but that's the starting point. And yeah. what we also found out in, in our research, and we knew before, but the research kind of confirms what we all, all know is when we create a presentation, it's, a, it's typically a hybrid mode. First, I get slides that are already out there somewhere that yeah. I'll put in, maybe I modify them, maybe I don't even need to modify them. The and then I need to add some custom slides. So mm -hmm. that's like always, right? Get some existing stuff, get, add some new stuff. Yeah. And along these lines, Empower will help you, of course, in both ends, but let's start with the existing slides. So we offer a slide library. You can marketing and mm. sales and what whoever uses the system heavily can, can put like centrally available slides inside the library very easily. Um, these slides get, of course, updated, synchronized um, to every PC, every iPhone, whatever you need. And yeah. um, also Macs now, everything is in there. Um, and you can yeah, distribute these, these elements. And now if you have an update, that's typical corporate company presentation. We have new quarter, new year, new numbers. So yeah. central person updates the slide. And if you are using an old version, you get even a pop-up saying, hey, this is outdated. So... Mm. Um, and this idea is big because we get um, we are just now launching something what we call and I think that's good for without having the visual in this podcast of showing it. It's imagine Google image search. Imagine using Google every day. Everybody mm. uses it every day. You're looking for an image, and now think this yep. for your entire world of presentations inside your company. So imagine you have a place mm. and actually the, the look and feel of our new version looks like Google. L think about Google, you type a, a keyword and you see all the slides stored in SharePoint, stored in Teams, stored on network drives, stored anywhere in your organization and you find them slide by slide, not presentation by presentation. You can even find similar that's slides. Very important. And, and that's the experience that we are, um, that we are offering. So you, you literally, with a few searches, you can find all the slides that are available done by anybody in your organization ever. So that's like, that's mm. one big thing. And I have to keep it short. So that's, yeah. you, we will make yeah. it easy to find existing stuff because we found out from the study, there are two big times and killers. Finding existing stuff is cumbersome. Yeah. You ask colleagues, you waste their time now because they start searching for you as well. And they are opening up all these yep. old presentations. And so this is one problem. And the other um, is now you create new stuff. So um, ideally you worked with companies like yours um, they, and then you created cool designs, cool design templates yep. and really good stuff. And this stuff now needs to be adapted. So because I mean, if I create new content, I have this beautiful slide, but I need to, you know, maybe adjust it a little bit. And what is I mean, we offer like the full set of tooling to, you know, lots of layout tools. And but also like the latest one is we have um, deep L integration now. That's like you can literally um, translate into right now deep L of 10 languages. Um, and of course, you could also add Google Translate. Yeah. So you can do a live translation of all your slides in the presentation. 
um, of course, automated. So you need to still revise it afterwards. Double check that. And, and once you're done, so you created your new slides, we'll connect. I mean, you need images and icons. We connect to, to your digital asset management system. If you have an image in the library, we'll connect to it. Yeah. And out of the box, you get connections to Unsplash. You get connections to Icons 8, like an icon library. So you can just Google mm. there. Uh, you can use directly through PowerPoint, get all this cool content mm. in. And once you're done, now I'm getting to an end, Boris, I promise. And now once you're done, you have tools to check your presentation. We'll yeah. have a corporate design checker that ensures that nothing is in there that doesn't match the brand. We have a spell checker that ensures that you run the spell check properly. We have a checker yeah. that you don't have, you know, like consistency issues, like double spaces, missing points at the end of a sentence, like all these kind of small stuff Annoying that saves a lot of time. So it's so our vision is from A to Z. So you start with the right template, you get easy access to all the slides, and then you can very easily create um, new slides. Um, and that's that's what we do in a nutshell. If that's a nutshell, so. Do you, do you have like I I would I would agree that you do not just that but quite a lot of other things, mm -hmm. especially when I was testing everything. It is just way more than this. But anyhow, uh, do you? By the way, curious question. I'm just curious. There is a lot of especially in the um, going back. By the way, to the fact that you are working for Accenture, which are one of the top brands out there, especially in the way they present themselves, meaning their designs and their corporate identity. I can imagine that. And my question is going there. I can imagine that there were a lot of charts, a lot of data, a lot of money involved in the presentation, meaning that there was constantly something related to money and costs and expenses or whatever in the presentations. But we now saw with a lot of our customers who are on a C-level, right? C-level executives who are like crazy detail oriented right i mean especially when it comes to their presentations they really care about how things go and how things look because it's not just because they present themselves but it because it gives them confidence right when their presentation is on a top level it boosts their confidence even further but what we saw was that they for example get very detailed also which is all about consistency obviously about hey if i'm writing and typing something that's a currency right? Some number and then the currency. I want all across this presentation, whenever we talk about euro, for the euro to be typed in this way, yeah. right? Is there, or a dollar, every single time the dollar should be in front and not at the back and not at the back of the number. Um, like, it's obvious that you can go and say, hey, I can replace, probably do some replace, find and replace whatever type of operation. Do you have something like this or is it planned at all? Because yeah. that would be a very interesting feature. I would be yeah, it's it's actually um, it's it's in there in our consistency check. So the consistency check, it's it's exactly it's that's not. So we have to, various checkers, if you will, and one checker is the the corporate yeah. check, which checks against brand guidelines. So this one is not a brand guideline. Obviously, this is something more for consistency. And what we have is yep. um, this, this uh, consistency check is customizable to any client. So you just mentioned, I would like to have the dollar maybe as a dollar sign just before the number with or without a space. I don't know what is official, but mm. it's a question of taste. So this could be a rule that can be added into the consistency check in your Empower installation. The next client would say, hey, I want Euro to be EUR behind the number in any occasion. And mm. then th their consistency check would do. So it's a consistency check that can be customized to, let's say, we sometimes call it corporate wording, but also to corporate standards in terms of communication. So you could add these rules mm. and then the checker okay. will check against. And of course, yeah, you're right. At the end of the day, it's a it's an intelligent find and replace but it makes it very easy. You don't have to think about it. You just hit that button and it analyzes your it analyzes your presentation. And by the way, we had one client recently that had that wanted such a checker, but they also wanted a a, a currency switcher. So they actually wanted to have a, a logic that That's switches nice. all numbers and their currency. And so they could enter an exchange rate. And then we would go and look That's for nice. all, I mean, it would parse all the text in the presentation. And whenever it finds the combination of numeric 
plus a currency sign, it would replace it with the logic. Yeah. So then I think it's a, it's, a, it's a nice, it's a beautiful question because it shows that whatever you have as a challenge can be solved technically and, and as long as we can define it, right? As long as we can kind of say, yeah. that's the rule. When we find this, we can do that. And this would be a perfect example for that is absolutely doable. And it's, it's, it's part of our customization of the product to a specific client because every client is different. Yeah. And I also remember that you also solve one of those very annoying problems with fonts, which is when you use the normal replace fonts feature in PowerPoint that not that many people know about in first place. Yeah. So uh, go to the home tab, go to the replace, click on the arrow that's pointing below and you'll see something that's called replace fonts. But yeah. replace fonts doesn't change the font in charts and smart, in smart art objects. But you guys figured it, figured it out somehow. Like, uh, can you... Like, can you share that with Microsoft or something? Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you are able to change it. So, I mean, we, right. have, we are happy to share yeah. anything with Microsoft as we are, of course, working closely with them and dependent. I'm not sure whether they will immediately integrate this into their product. So, I mean, what we do yeah. with these kind of functionality, we go um, on the OpenXML level. Um, and the, I mean, mm. presentation consists technically yep. out of OpenXML. And what is interesting, yeah. sometimes you can do more on, you can do everything on OpenXML, while you can do some things for some reason not inside PowerPoint without tooling, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, so just to give you another example or another flavor is we can, we have a functionality that is called a locker slide. So you know that from Word, you know that from Excel, you can lock an individual cell, you can lock the sheet. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm using that all the time and to make it just more bulletproof to use. So we can lock yep. slides now. It's, and here's the fun part is that functionality, I mean, does not exist inside PowerPoint, but finally yep. within OpenXML for PowerPoint, it does exist. So what we just do is we bring this feature up to the surface, make it available. Um, and sometimes, yes, I mean, this is a feature I would have to admit if Microsoft solves that we will kick it out of our product. But in the last 10 years, it has not happened. So <laughs> yeah, that's so just amazing. We are constantly being amazed by the fact that they are adding or fixing stuff that's so irrelevant to the end user. And at the end of the day, there are just those few issues that are such big deal that for some reason don't get the love that they need to, you know, it was just, just think about that. Like, just think about it. It is three or four months now that we have a hex support for colors in PowerPoint. Four months from like, this is now December, 2020, Microsoft released hex support for PowerPoint, like probably in September or okay, August, 2020. And people were screaming at them for years and years. Like, why is it that hard to just bring the hex you have the RGB, can you bring the hex? And it's 10 years at least that I know that people are asking for. Jesus, it's, anyway. <laughs> I think <laughs> and there is something that's, I don't know how it works behind the scenes, even though I'm an, an MVP and I get this internal kind of access to the product group, etc. But sometimes all of us are wondering, how do you guys prioritize? <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I can, I, I, Maybe I can um, defend the Microsoft colleagues a little bit here because I met uh, many of them um, yeah. in uh, several locations over the last years. And I have to say one thing, the guys that, at Mike, that work at Microsoft are amazing because I think these guys sometimes are our age and they have to have, they get a lot of feedback, right? And they have to always cope with it, although it's not their fault. Um, yeah. so, and But I met these guys and actually I was asking and there was, um, it was a situation where many people were asking exactly questions like you just asked and they were explaining challenges they had and and there are some major impact and one thing i think that helps to understand why their pace is so slow if i may say mm. is the last three or four years was bringing my office to the platforms like the ipad to mac yeah. to have really the same code base that's what they did bringing the online versions. I mean, yeah. they are not done yet, obviously, but at least they started with it. So they had to, yeah. they had to yeah. find many fights um, and many, many fronts to you know, bring it up. Um, and yeah, of course. So this is one, uh, one excuse. The other one I think is a problem with, I think it's called user voice. 
it's their way of gathering feedback. Yep. Um, yes, and it's, hey, that's a modern way. Ask the entire global community for feedback. But here's the, here's the problem. As they have hundreds of millions of users, um, you know what? People like we, <laughs> like having like problems where we think, hey, this is just, just fix that. That's a nightmare. We are not the majority of people using user voice. The majority could be people. I mean, look at, look at the next wedding. You will see a, a presentation, many presentations made with PowerPoint, with images, with, with videos. Yep. Those people, nothing against it, right? But I think that's a challenge that Microsoft has. There is so much, if you look at user voice, stupid, I mean, really ridiculous features nobody needs get thousands or ten thousands of votes. And we, from, a, from mm. the community of creating professional presentations, maybe, maybe our ideas get 100 votes. And now that's the challenge, I think. And that's why, I mean, that's why like, companies like us exist. <laughs> yep. Because we are trying, and that's why Microsoft appreciates partners like us, because we are helping a certain industry, let's call it the professional presentation industry. I mean, yeah. we help these, these companies or people that do professional business presentations to solve yep. some of the problems or things they don't have because they can't, they can't make everybody happy. It's more like, I would see at the end of the day, it's like a platform. They have the platform. You can create presentations and spreadsheets. And, and now you have like in any ecosystem, you have apps that help you do that stuff in a more efficient way. So that's my take on it. I fully agree with you, Boris. There are many things that I get crazy about as well, but I think that's a bit of the systematic problem they face with, mm. with prioritizing their feedback. Yeah, I mean, the, like if you go back really and take a look at what Microsoft, for example, did in the last few years in regards to PowerPoint, surely you'll be amazed. Like the amount of things that changed for good, right? For good. I mean, just, just, if we start to name them, you just be amazed, right? I mean, they're doing a lot of things. And obviously those moves to all of the platforms, as you mentioned, and the online version and the mobile versions and the Mac OS stuff and all of that, you can only imagine how time consuming that could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there are still some little things, for example, tables. <laughs> so, There's, yeah, I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. Yeah, so you also have this, this. how can we name it? Like, do you, the, let's start there. I personally got from our customers at least a dozen times the question, hey, can I easily create a timeline, a project, many, like a project timeline in PowerPoint? Can I easily do that? Because I know about this thing that's called Office Mix, and this uh, office timeline thing, not office mix, but office timeline, which is an add-in that yeah. was possible before, but it doesn't work for me. It's not there yet. And in your in and empower uh, slides, there is something that when I saw it, I was like, okay, that is now a different story. You can even ungroup it, animate it. That's what, if you remember, that was my first question. Can I animate this, right? Because if I can, it's crazy stuff. What type of charts, what type of, data visualizations if you wish or charting things you we have in empower mm -hmm. so yeah so you you already mentioned we we have the i think we call it the gantt chart the project plan which is i think yep. the, the timeline and um, so this is something where i would agree i think if if you would ask me for the one slide that most people would use across all industries and across all functions i would say it's certainly the gantt chart the project yep. plan with more or less detail but it's just, it's just the, um, yeah, probably the, the, that's probably the slide. So we, what we automated is the full creation of it. Um, so yeah. you can literally drag and drop everything. You you have like a little time picker and then you can drag your phases and your your project um, lines. Um, so yeah, it's, it's fun to use. And it's certainly something, I mean, my, without spoiling here too much is we'll, we'll bring out a free version um, early next year. Um, and it could be very interesting. Maybe you know, uh, you, you guys, you can be the first ones to to try it out because the the the, the, the project plan will be for personal. I mean, for business use, but only for you yourself. So with, there is, of course, some sort of um, restriction to any free version. And the free version restriction we in, in implemented is that you can create create your own Gantt chart. But if you work with colleagues on a Gantt chart, it will not be supported. 
So if it, if you, I mean, mm. if you're an organization, then that's a restriction. But if you just need for yourself, just a quick, cool, good looking gunshot for the next um, um, project, you can use that with our free version. And yeah, it's certainly, I would say the most popular function out of all these functions, maybe besides the agenda wizard. And that's probably one of the, yeah. Most yeah, popular. the agenda wizard is also them. <laughs> like it's very cool stuff also <laughs> okay so you saw something that let's go just very quickly out of the design part out of the empower world uh, there are a lot of like presentations still continue to happen right there are quite a lot nowadays however major thing changed and the way they were they're delivered changed meaning that it's now all online it's all zooms teams all of those things like if you if we have to just say hey this is what changed in the presentations or in the presentation world because of this online method of delivery. What are the biggest changes you think that you are noticing when you are communicating with the people around you, with your customers, etc.? Obviously not something that's related to the platform, to the tools, but something that I would be kind of curious to hear also your viewpoint. Like all of things changed. We are using completely different tools. We are not speaking in, in a room or in a conference setup, now we're speaking over Zoom or over Teams. Like, what is the difference? Like, what do you think there? Mm. Um, a good question. I mean, I think uh, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to give you my- How much time do we have now? <laughs> sorry, is sorry. it again, how much time do we have? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I mean, I, I'm of course being based in Germany. I can speak mostly about like a German culture that changed yeah, during course, the, this COVID crisis. And we used as a software company, we used to do a lot of pitches online even before COVID, right? And face-to-face -face meetings have become less popular um, in recent years. Okay. And what has changed, not not related to the presentation itself, but to the meeting culture, is very simple mm. in Germany now, nobody would ever switch on a camera before COVID. It was really? like in, in a business context, if you would talk to a, a provider like us, you would have only voice over, right? There would be no video. And thanks to COVID, I would really? say That's people, easy. because you're using it for all your internal meetings and you realize the camera is so much better to have a more personal meeting than without. So now they took it with... So when they speak to us now, they also all have the cameras on. And we had this, I had this policy internally that said, whenever we speak to a client, we always switch on the camera. I, we don't care if they don't switch them on, we do. Because that's our way of yeah. being personal, right? Let's show our faces and be focused mm. on the client and the meeting. And now it's really cool. Everybody has camera on. I think it, it, I think it brings more quality to the calls and the presentations. Um, I'm still yeah, waiting nice for this one feature. And I think Teams is working on it. I'm still waiting for the feature where the presenter face or parts of the body is visible while the presentation is in presentation mode. You know what I mean? Right now- yeah, They're working on it, yeah. They are working on it, right? I have also read something similar. And I think that's exactly what I think is missing because I want my audience like as I would stand in front of the audience. I would be able to show myself, yep. talk to them, switch the presentation to black or white, you know, and then yep. go back to the presentation because I think that's the most powerful combination. So I'm really looking forward to that feature because right now it's the moment you start your full screen presentation mode, you don't see the audience anymore. Um, yeah. You don't see yourself. The audience doesn't see yourself presenting. And um, I think that's something I'm, I'm excited about. But yeah, that's, I think that's my COVID take um, so far on the, the presentation itself. Would you say it changed? I'm not sure. Oh, the presentations themselves just needed to change in regards to the number of interactions, right? True. Because you don't get feedback from the audience because you just don't see them, right? Yeah. And that's why you have to rethink how you navigate any presentation or, or any pitch or any talk that you deliver online because especially if people are not on camera, you can only imagine that, where are they? Are they even listening? Like what's going on? like what's going on in here <laughs> to whom I, whom i'm speaking to at all like that just requires and if you hear people that we work with you would hear this que this comment not question but comment where they say um, i just i'm just not sure whether or not they're listening mm. that is yeah. the 
that is number one comment in the last few months, you know, and that's why you have to, so for example, today I delivered a training on data visualization for a very big bank and every single thing that we were doing, like probably on the every third minute, there was something that I was asking them to comment in the chat, you know, mm. and this way, like, if, okay, it's not third minute, but every fifth minute, right? There was something, hey, what do you think? Have you seen this? Let me know with yes and no, plus one, uh, whatever. Like just type in something so that you are there and I'm sure that you are engaged. Then I ask them to unmute themselves, right? Yeah. To talk about it. On and on, those interactions are just so, so much needed in this new world. It's just, it is crazy. Yeah. It is crazy. I think it's, uh, you're, you're right. And I know, I realize now where you're heading to. I fully agree that I think that the best, quick tip, if you will, to implement immediately. Ask these questions and don't just let them go out with a, uh -huh, all right, just like <laughs> ask something where they have to answer. Um, and that's something, I mean, I think we are, so, so it's a good point because for us, as I said, even in enterprise sales, we did a lot of pitches virtually mm. before COVID. And now we have the advantage, now we start seeing faces. We didn't yep. see them before, so it's getting better for us. But um, what I would agree is, and maybe, I mean, I think there are also tools out there to yeah. even integrate sometimes like very little fun surveys, stuff like this, right? So, yeah. so what I sometimes do if I have a big pitch, I mean, I don't use a survey software right now, but I know it exists for PowerPoint. Yeah. And that I, for example, say, I, I talked about the study earlier about Nielsen, right? Yep. So I would, I would kick off a presentation where I pitch and say, so um, what do you think? So we did a study, um, but I want to test your knowledge. What do you think? How much yeah. time do people spend on average? And just by asking this question, that's exactly your trick as well, right? You people, you engage them. They have to think even a second about this problem. And by making them think about the problem because they are scared that I pick them, like, <laughs> who's yeah. going to ask now? <laughs> and they have to think about it. And now, um, I mean, of course, I don't want to scare anybody. I want to just engage them. And, and what I think, what I did a few times, which worked nice is you stop the presentation and when you ask the question and you know what I do, you know, in, in teams and probably Zoom has it as well, the together mode where yeah. everybody sits virtually in one, you know, in, in, one, yeah. like in one university room, it looks yeah. like a university hall. And so I'll share my screen and I'll, I stop showing PowerPoint and I show them themselves. So we all look on my screen. We all look like we're sitting in one room, like in the university yeah. and I'm talking to them and say, so what do you think? Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, and then I'm, because now people have to look into the camera, they have to be engaged because now everybody would see <laughs> if they just do freaking emails, you yeah, know? That's true. Um, so don't get me wrong here. I think it's tips from, um, from people who face the same problem. It's yeah. like anything that helps to engage the audience by, by keeping them focused. And that's, a, I think that's a nice trick because it's very easy and everybody yeah. will suddenly, oh, I'm, I'm on screen now for everybody visible. So I'd rather... You know, because I Dave. think nobody does it um, to be impolite. People do yeah. it because they're stressed out, have many emails to do. And so that's, a, I think that's a good way to bring yeah, them back. So maybe true. surveys, if technically possible, maybe just asking questions that are not yes, no. Oh, if you um, think about it, Microsoft integrated quite well uh, Microsoft Forms into Teams. So everyone who is using Microsoft Teams, which is a lot of organizations, so if you're listening, you can just use Microsoft Forms inside of Microsoft Teams and you can create surveys on the spot, right? Polls that you can start immediately during a call, during a presentation online. And you can just poll people and ask them for opinion, which adds this dynamic also. And it yeah. really engages people, you know, like it really and does. So that's great that you mentioned it because I didn't, I use Forms a lot, but I didn't know that you can integrate into Teams. And I would say, if you are presenting in, yeah. in front of a larger audience, I would say that's yep. the best way to go because asking yep. people in a room to say what's important to you in that meeting. Yeah. Come on. We, we all did it and we know it's getting really yeah. time it wasting. So there will Very. be the one big manager being like, okay, you're wasting my time. I don't yeah. want to speak 20 minutes about, you know, just do stuff. So you could start off a meeting saying, Hey, I, I have one question for you. Here's a, here's a multi, you know, multi-choice question for you. What do you really yeah. care about in this presentation? And then you can at least say, okay, I know what to skip, what not to talk about. I know here seems to yep. be some maturity. 
everybody will feel engaged like okay this guy is really trying to make it fit to us so it's a su super small trick yeah. probably um but yeah i think anything along these lines it works. Helps because the big the bigger the group works. The, the harder it gets yeah absolutely absolutely Stefan, it's like 56 minutes, 55 minutes already. Uh, we can go on for hours, <laughs> maybe. Uh, but you are going to let me end with this because we haven't talked about it. And I believe it's kind of important. Uh, we are also going to see Empower on the conference and you at the conference, which is coming in April. So what are we expecting from you? What should people expect from your session that you are going to bring to the table as part of the event? What are the plans there? So um, it's maybe a little bit of, of what we discussed today. So I think we mm. want to we wanna share a lot more um, insights about the study. Um, I, 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 yep. I sneak peeked a little bit some results, but there are much more um, cool facts and figures and surprising, um, surprising results, how, how people in corporates work with PowerPoints. Yep. So we want to talk about that. Of course, we want to very hands-on showcase some best practices some stuff that um uh, some cool case studies from clients so nothing like you know not a typical sales demo no worries and um, it will be it will be entertaining but it will be real clients facing real problems and of yeah. course we want to show how tools like ours um can really support people and save a lot of time i think that's that's in a nutshell uh, as hard as it is for me and um, what to expect and we'll try to be as educating as possible um, and to be not not the selling guys. That's not our philosophy here. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that one, especially because you are going to add the data from the survey every single time when there is new data in regards to the behavior of people and how they use presentations, how they approach them, what problems they're solving. It always becomes so, so interesting to see because you can only guess, but then when you see the data and when you see the confirmation out of two, three, four, five thousand people that just said, "Hey, I have, I'm struggling with this. I spent 40 40 percent of my time of those seven hours, as you started at the beginning, formatting my slides. Mm. What the hell is that? Like that is insane. There was, by the way, a very recent study on presenting virtually. I don't know if you know about it. It was done by the Goodman Center. Mm -hmm. So these guys at the U.S. did this research where they approached, I believe, three or 4,000 people that when I saw the data in regards to how much time people spend in online calls during a week, I was like, Jesus Christ. That is, there were people on average, like on average, on average, more or less, the data was something like 15 or 16 hours mm. on a weekly basis. Yeah. I was like, what? What yeah. is going on? And that's why they they also had this advice. Hey, people are spending a lot of time there. Think, always think before you schedule them yet another call, think, can you do it without, mm -hmm. right? Can you do that communication or like, can you do that without them or without inviting them on a call because they already have a lot, right? So there was like very interesting when we see studies like those. I cannot wait for that one. Hopefully, uh, I will get a sneak peek before that. Absolutely. I will see how that goes. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Okay, so where can people find more about you and the company? What are the best places to communicate with you and learn more about Empower? Mm, I mean, of course, our website is the first place to be to, to check out um, if you're interested. I mean, it's empowersuite.com. Uh, one word, empowersuite.com. Yep. Um, if, you, if you have questions, just feel free uh, to contact me directly. It's um, I'm not sure okay. whether there are some some comments. It's Stefan Pukunert at EmpowerSuite.com. Um, I'm so we I think we both are so passionate about this topic. I love to interact with anybody who 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 has questions or or has a point of view. Um, so yeah, just reach out to me directly. I um, would love to to get in touch. And otherwise, I mean, all the social media channels that we have. Um, yeah. Are probably, yeah easiest is to link and um, see the links on the website i think there are all the typical okay. ones i will link your linkedin profile i think it will be nice i mean yeah that's you cool. are very responsible if you, also, i mean i think it's now, now my only advertising in case you, you care about the presentation industry which you which you do probably listening to this podcast and um, 
our newsletter you can sign up it's it's no advertising it's content only it's market research it's it's news about microsoft and what's out there it's coming i don't know every few every few weeks and we will also mm. announce the free version coming out soon and the study so if you want to be one of the first to get it you either check out boris uh, who, who will get it up front um, or um, also through our newsletter and um, that's a source of Perfect. information not advertising i have to stress <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For everyone is tired of newsletter advertisement. I know that's like, why I'm trying that's to... just so much. <laughs> I was wondering whether we find yeah, a better just word. Too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. So we were going to link absolutely everything that you mentioned in the show notes. People are going to be able to find them in the pod as part of the podcast show notes, but also in the blog post that we are going to kind of provide obviously together with the uh, together with the podcast. So Thanks again for spending this one hour. Like it was a pleasure. You dropped a lot of interesting knowledge and kind of way of thinking in regards to presentations and what you guys are doing, how you're helping. Thanks for spending the time and definitely looking forward to the session. I mean, definitely. Yeah, thank you and very much for the yeah. research. Yeah. So for everyone who didn't know about Empower for some reason, Again, everything is in the show notes. Please check them out. They're doing incredible stuff. And especially the Empower Slides is crazy. It is crazy, really. So you have the notes. And in case you want to know about more about the event, it's present2succeed.com. You'll find Stefan there, obviously, a lot of other people there. Obviously, it's happening in April, in the middle of April. And in case you want to know more about who we are and whose podcast you are listening up until now, it's 356slaps.com. Stefan, a lot of people think that we are 365. I don't know if you know that, but a lot of people would say hey, it's 365 Labs. No, it's 356slaps.com. Go check us out. We do a lot of things in regards to presentations. So thanks for listening. And yeah, hope to see you in the next one.